pause for a minute. Do you know what your first impression is? A lot of us don't. A lot of us don't. And I know for me, when I started to get that feedback on it, I was flabbergasted. I was frustrated. <laughs> it's shocking. Right? Like, what do you mean? This is not me. This is not how I want to present to the world. And then I fell into, well, how do I figure this out, right? What do I do? How do I mimic the right people? What are the signals? And it's it's easy to get caught in this, this trap of, okay, well, I got to change everything, right? Usually, it's a lot simpler than that. It's just subtracting a few things that you're doing to protect yourself, to feel more secure in an environment that's uncomfortable that can actually lead you astray. Well, think about what your worldview looks like if you hadn't chose chosen your first impression and let's just say if you've given a bad first impression for let's say a few years now yeah. <laughs> and you're wondering why everyone just seems put off or not giving you any time and how quickly then do you now start seeing everyone in that same manner or that the world is very tough and then have to come to terms with for years, it's been on your plate is the reason why everyone has been viewing you in that manner. So, as you mentioned, it's hard to get out of, especially knowing that for years now, the reason you've had such a small window of opportunity is you've been yourself and it could have been easily corrected if you just thought about it. Yeah, and a lot of us get hung up on the words, right? I want to say the right <laughs> thing. I want to appear funny. But if you put a little emphasis and energy and work into that first impression, that window, that momentum can carry the day. So you don't have to be as funny. You don't have to dig up yourself out of a hole. And if you think about this, our first impression of the people around us stays with us. So that first impression you had of your friend typically was a good one, which allowed you to feel comfortable pursuing that relationship. So how many people in your life have you written off based on, as Dr. Todorov would said, your fallacies, right? Your own beliefs about people. And what, what's so interesting about his research is that our judgments of first impressions relate to our environment, meaning the facial expressions you're exposed to become your baseline. And when people deviate from your baseline, then you make judgments negatively. So, for example, if your father growing up had a furrowed brow when he was deep in thought, then you would, by the, absorbing that environment and picking up that first impression of people, you would view people with furrowed brows more positively than someone who had a sunny disposition in his parents and didn't see that anger come through. So what Alex is saying here is don't focus on writing people off based on your first impression. It's a snapshot that's usually wrong. And that's the myth that we're trying to bust here of focusing on reading other people's body language and trying to understand their first impressions. That's not where we should be putting our focus. Yes, We need to look at ourselves and make sure that we're projecting the right things. 